Let's meet the seven politicians vying for your votes. I was born around the time that the NHS was founded. It was an amazing thing, but unfortunately, now it is on its knees. So many public services are not working as they used to. Do any of you have any ideas that are big enough to make things work again? The NHS in particular, it's an act of faith for the people of this country. They want to be able to rely on it. But since the COVID pandemic, the caseload that our healthcare professionals are dealing with has gone up by 43%. The only way that we can reduce those waiting lists is to keep the NHS budget strong. That we have done, that we will continue to do. The only party on this platform that has ever cut the NHS budget is Labour. They've cut it three times in Wales. The NHS is one of our proudest achievements and it will be come Labour that will have to fix it again. Before I was an MP, I was a Unison rep and I was a home care worker. And in 2010, the Tories, aided and abetted by the Lib Dems, created austerity, which meant many of our workforce were made redundant. And now we've got the crisis in the NHS. So we've got to fix the workforce problem and we've got to invest. That's why we then the non-DOM tax status so we can put 40,000 new appointments and we'll use up private sector to bring down those waiting lists. But the NHS will remain a public service under Labour. The elephant in the room is the fact that it's not migration is the problem, it's the fact that we need more people coming in okay. to work in our hospitals <laughs> let, let and to work in our social care okay. sector, which has been decimated by your Brexit. Thank Isn't you. the point? Just All we want just... is for it to be free at the point of delivery. That's what matters. And actually, Labour are quite right to say, let's use the private sector to try and reduce some of the waiting lists. Why not actually give people tax relief on paying money into private insurance to relieve more of the pressure? Right, it's one of the problems we've had over the last few years, as you know, is that the Conservatives have absolutely gutted primary care. Some people go to see their GP. Your party promised 6,000 more GPs. We now have fewer per head. Um, we you know, have dentists <laughs> fleeing the NHS and working privately <coughs> because the dental contract is so broken and hasn't been fixed. Boris Johnson stood on the steps of Downing Street and promised to fix social care once and for good, and he hasn't, and it's now in crisis. Okay. So our plan is to fix the front door with more GPs and dentists and to fix the back door by fixing social Care. Okay, quick response and that from is Penny. Exactly I want to bring what we are doing. Down, yeah. We have grown the number of healthcare professionals, and they're leaving. Have, it's one we, in have, one out. we have seventy thousand more nurses. You're pouring into a uh, leaky we bucket. Have, uh, we have a dental recovery plan. It's not working. Uh, Just taxing the rich doesn't solve this. And everyone here is talking Nigel, about more money, I'll, more investment. I'm telling I'll bring you, you back. we've massively increased investment in the NHS for a worse return. It's not just about money. Carla Zanya, which I did say about reform as well. I'll introduce some facts to this debate. I when the did. rules on non-DOM status were changed in this country in 2017, there was no difference in who was leaving the country amongst those that were affected by that change Absolute and those who weren't. Nonsense. No, that's true. Well, I was a home care worker. We gutted out home care services. It costs so much more money now that people are stuck on trolleys in A&E for 40 hours plus. These are our elderly relatives Doesn't that are treated really poorly question. and it costs us more money. So if we put the money in the right place, we can actually make savings. I did that when I was a home care and trade union rep. I know we can do it again, but at the moment we're hemorrhaging money because the money is being used in the most inappropriate okay. way and people are not getting the care that All right, they deserve. Thank you very much. I keep hearing uh, migration levels are too high and getting higher and it's a strain on public services. But I understand we as a country need some foreign workers. What are you going to do? What we need at the moment is a skill strategy. We've not had an industrial and skill strategy. So what we've had is we've been over-reliant on our economy from overseas workers to fill our skills gap. And they've done a tremendous job in doing that. And we have needed that. But what we really need, as unemployment levels have gone higher again, is we need to really match those skills and give people opportunity to take those jobs. But it's funny Angela Rayner says that because Labour today launched their six key priorities for the general election and didn't mention the single most important issue affecting the lives of everybody in this country, namely the population explosion caused directly by migration. The problem is we don't have enough migrants because Scotland has a declining working age population. So we need people to come. The problem we have is that Nigel Farage here has been on a dog whistle tour of the UK for many, many years and exploiting the anxieties that people have. And we really need to change the way that we talk about this issue. Thank you. The reason we voted Brexit 
And the reason Penny's party got the massive majority in 2019 is we voted to reduce the numbers coming in and the numbers have exploded. To, uh, to, I mean, it, honestly, unbelievable. One in 30 people walking on the street out there has come in the last two years alone. The answer is we have to have net migration at zero. It means skilled workers can come, we can go work abroad, we have to have a freeze on the total numbers of those coming in. Please raise your hand if you think the net level of legal migration, that is the additional number of people coming to the country to work and live, needs to fall. Please raise your hand. The number needs to fall. What a sorry Nigel fortune. Farage, Penny Mordaunt, it's Dick, due to fall anyway. <laughs> Daisy Cooper, Angela Rayner. The Westminster very much. status quo. That's Thank exactly. You. That's the Westminster no, status quo. Of course, no, no, it is. No, the no, four main even. part is. No, it isn't. The four main no, part is Stephen. all with the exact I welcome same immigration thing. because I think that <clears throat> people come here and they're more likely to prop up our public services and work in our public services rather than they are to put a drain on our public services. So I welcome immigration in this well. country because they contribute to our public service. But the numbers are due to come down anyway. But we have to build one new home every two minutes just to cope with legal net migration under this Conservative oh, government. It is literally impossible. And as for the numbers coming in, I would respond to this. 50% of the three-quarters of a million who are coming in a year are dependents. They're not wealth creators. And mass migration is making us poorer. The problem that we have in higher education Facts. now is that changes in visa uh, requirements means that family members aren't able to come and study uh, uh, to, to, to accompany uh, students to Good. Welsh universities. That Good. is causing major problems Good. in terms of revenue for our okay. uh, higher education. You shouldn't education. bring your mum. You come to university in Britain, you but can't they... bring your mum, can okay. you? I mean, come on. <laughs> and when Nigel Farage tells you all that migrants are making you poor and they're the problem, don't believe him. Do you want to know the biggest problem facing the UK economy right now? His pet project of Brexit. Uh, £40 billion uh, pounds worth of tax receipts. <laughs> and and do, you want to know what, do you want to know what makes it worse? The Labour Party back Brexit as outlined by their manifesto today. Okay. Shameful. Yeah. What are you going to do with illegal migrants when we, they come here, We Angela? have said that we will fill our skills back gap with an industrial strategy uh, to you're, match you people to, to the skills. Okay. Okay. Because Sorry, what the Tories... Tories thank you. You let's, have, you're not letting me finish. Your leader was you asked a finish? specific question at the okay. manifesto launch today. Thank you. And your leader couldn't answer Penny it. We think it's shameful when some politicians scapegoat the people who become our neighbours our friends, our colleagues, to distract from their chronic underinvestment in public services. Britain is a rich country. I've worked in housing for 32 years. Why am I working every day with individuals and families who never thought they'd struggle, but now rely on food banks and are at serious risk of homelessness? Uh, because people are getting poorer. It's quite simple. You know, I mentioned a few moments ago that, that GDP, wealth per capita, has fallen for the last six consecutive quarters. Right. You, you know what the public can't afford, Penny, is any longer one single day more of a Conservative government which is completely out of touch with the reality. But the fact is that the cost of, um, cost of living crisis has been made so much worse by the mini-budget, which blew a hole in the public finances and made people's rent and mortgages go absolutely sky-high, and people have felt that hit and they are still trying to recover now. Really? People have lost faith in politics. We feel disconnected from our representatives and sceptical that you will deliver on your promises. The public simply doesn't trust our system anymore. What one change can you make to restore trust in politics? For bringing back integrity and ethics into our politics, which is what Keir Starmer will do in Labour, is exactly what we need to do, because people cannot go around, as they have done, breaking the rules and think they can get away with it. The Prime Minister did, the previous Prime Minister to that has done, and I think that's undermined all of us as politicians. <laughs> Well, we, we're at the dawn of a, a new parliament, and I think if we want integrity back, then people need to be honest about their manifestos. The only party on this platform <laughs> that is going to cut your taxes is the Conservative Party. A vote for any other party will increase your taxes. Higher taxes, higher taxes, higher taxes, what? higher taxes, what higher are taxes, you on about? higher taxes, higher taxes, higher taxes, higher taxes. No wonder people are, are fed up. It's the PPE uh, corruption. It's the Downing Street parties during Covid. We need to hold politicians to higher standards than we've seen in recent years.
Thank you very much. Indeed. I'll get that little piece of dandruff off.